Hey, hi, uh, I'm Luca from ETB. I'll be sharing some of the possible projects for aviation for Edilev. Uh, I'm basically sharing about two examples, a user's existing tool for lesson package. So the first example I have is called the Tracker. It's an open source tool by a professor from the USA. His name is uh, Douglas Brown. Basically, this tool is free for educational use. You can download it, you can even launch it on the web. Uh, there are no copyright issues that I know of. Professor created this tool so that it can be used freely by, for educational purposes. So, for example, an Edilab project could look something like this. Maybe say the teacher idea that you, you and me have could be like we want to use the idea of using video analysis and modeling to learn uh, motion of a so it could be a projectile as shown as the, in the slide, or it could be a bouncing ball, which I will talk about later. So later on, call my colleague will talk about, I think, what constitutes a lesson package. So here, I'm just going to just briefly go through some of these things. It's basically entails implementation strategies, student worksheets to guide the inquiry learning, uh, preferably with teacher answers, and etc. etc. Reflections of the teachers as well as ultimately the student feedback which is key to helping to improve the lesson design. Uh, what constitutes the Edilab project? You can look at this project. It fundamentally, it has a community of uh, researchers and as well as uh, teacher users that continually come up with lesson packages, worksheets to complement the tool that the professor has made. So I just downloaded the, the tool. Uh, it's called a tracker. You can just click on it. Uh, so now it's moving. Okay, so this is the tracker. So an Edilab project would look something like this. It allows uh, the students to import a video. Uh, but I've already done some previous work. Let me see whether I can launch this or not. So there are previously saved work that the student can do. So this, if you talk about assessing for learning, one great way to assess a student learning would be to let the student to create a work, send it to you, or, or upload it to some e-learning portal where you can actually look at the student's work. Because let me bring you through the process of learning here. Uh, basically, what happens is you can have a video that's captured by the student. So it's depicted by this picture of this old man standing here, ball dropping exercise. So the students have to manually track the position of the ball. It's not very big, but fortunately, uh, this is an open source tool and it's, very, it's quite well designed. So I can actually zoom in and let you see this. So basically, the student will track the motion and from the dynamic plots, uh, you can actually see that because I pre I pre done this like, because there's no way I can do this in 20 minutes and then there's another example coming up. So what happened is you can see that the student will plot this and you can see from the from the point that there's actually a, a position here that indicates where the uh, object is at. So this is your y. Y meaning uh, displacement Y. Uh, sorry, I teach physics, uh, so uh, bear with me. This is your velocity, which is automatically done, so the student don't have to worry about that. And this is the acceleration in the Y direction. Now, one common thing that you may find that for physics in the SEC tree or the JC system, you need the student to understand gravitational acceleration. So I'm going to, going to demo to you how it can be done by a tool like this that could be a regular project. So the student can actually do an analysis. Okay. The student has to manage his own learning. See, I'm trying to bring in all this term. Now. Manage your own learning. Select the region of the graph to analyze. So I could perhaps choose a, a, a best fit line. And the student has to intelligently decide, is it a parabola? Okay, parabola meaning it's a quadratic equation. Then there will be coefficients here, which is probably too small for any of you to, to read. Uh, but the number here is negative 4.8. Those of, those of my colleagues who teach physics like me will know that this number here, A, because it's the coefficient for the basic line here, which is again, I will, I will read out to you. Uh, y equal A multiplied by T squared plus B times T plus C. So A, any physics teacher here, would you like to tell me out? What would A represent? Anyone? Please? <laughs> Half of G, wonderful. So you see, the number here is negative 4.94. So 
So half of G, roughly there, okay? Very good, thank you very much. Now I can also I can also do the same analysis on a different set of data tools. So if you talk about managing your learning, so the student has to decide, okay, am I supposed to do this as well? So I'm just going to uncheck the Y axis and then just look at the velocity component. And I'm just going to select the same region of space which is indicated by the falling ball. Okay? So again, I have to understand that this is a linear line that I'm trying to, uh, to do a basic line. And again, the coefficient here is uh, given because of the computer being able to calculate all this. Okay, I'm going to read to you the graph here. Uh, B y equal to A times T plus B. Now, not to be confused with the earlier A and Bs. What the number here is negative 9.81. Does this ring any bell? Do you see the potential for deep learning here? Managing your learning and, and all. <laughs> now I can also take the acceleration. I have to select this region of data because this is the part where the acceleration is calculated. I could do a statistical fit. And the statistical fit from this number here is actually roughly negative. Here it is it is written as negative 1.015. E1. So this is actually 10.1. All the numbers that I have said are actually approximate values of the gravitational acceleration. So the student has to decide what is the value that best approximate that value. Okay. So just to relate back to what Steve said, learning is more powerful when the learning is dynamic. Do you see this as a dynamic process? Immediately when the student sees his own ball falling, he's able to analyze it. I mean, how you can motivate the student, uh, like what myself and uh, in River Valley High, uh, what we did was, we got the student to do a personally motivating YOG project. So that's how we motivate them, uh, hopefully in an intrinsic way. Coming back to this, if the student were to do all this, you can see how the experience are relevant to the context. So the student will understand physics in a, in a deeper manner. But actually, the, the tool can do a lot more. You can actually do a process called modeling. Now, put in certain values into some boxes, uh, and then the computer will automatically draw another ball so that the student can see the two balls falling. So, is my model closely modeling what the real ball is doing? So, this is what perhaps a regular project would want to do. Okay. Things for us to think about. So, can you see ownership of learning in this particular project? Then I'm going to elaborate. Correct? You can see management of the, uh, the learning, monitoring, yes. Okay, because I have gone through it while I was playing with the uh, tractor. Okay, extension of learning, again, uh, like what we said, we actually got the student to do a project. So they submit a project. Okay, COL, uh, what we did wasn't, wasn't really driving on technology, but the only technology that I could think of was there was a discussion forum for the students to post questions. Essentially, it is to allow the students to work in groups. Okay, accountability of learning, so in this case, the students who can actually uh, share their initial findings and then the discussion forum and then when the students were to post up some question, their initial finding, then how do you critique constructively? And of, of course, uh, never underestimate the power. The main trust of the learning actually comes from the teacher mentoring. Okay, example number two. This is an example from open source physics. A uh, lesson package we actually use an existing tool, so this open source tool is actually free available to any one of us. Uh, you, you can just download it and use it, you know. Possible today, ordinary mortals like you and me can actually change simulation. Uh, it's just a case of getting motivated and finding the reason to learn how to do it. In this project, it's possible that maybe we can customize some simulations so that we can provide the situations for students to learn about physics or some other science that you know of. Again, there will be your usual worksheet and, and teacher answers and uh, student feedback that will constitute a uh, lesson package. This uh, existing open source community has a group of people, uh, including myself, uh, contributing to this community. Okay, I'm going to demo another example. Okay, existingly, uh, there's a group of these open source tools, they, all these physics professors, they create all these tools, uh, but they use it for their undergraduate uh, 
education. They may use it to teach our own students. So what we can do is, it's all free, so you can just download their source code, look at it, try to make sense of it. Uh, there are a couple of us who apparently know all this, so uh, yeah, maybe we can start a community. So what we did was, in, again, in River Valley with my two friends, we actually made an applet based on an existing tool. So here the student actually can actually do self-directed learning. He has to decide. Through the construct of the worksheet, we allow the student to, to decide for themselves what they want to investigate. So they own their own learning. So that I can change my philosophy, you know. I have to decide to change. Let me make the font a bit bigger. And then I have to decide what are the masses for this particular uh, collision cards. And then is it a, what kind of collision card is it? And I could click play, check on the hints that the teacher can design a pedagogical uh, scaffolds for them to investigate or actually uh, look at. So you can see that here there are many things that can be activated in order to get the students not to hear the answer from us, but find out the answers for themselves from this virtual learning uh, environment. So it's something like assessment for learning. Or the student can actually realize that the total momentum is concerned. Uh, and if, let's say, you, you can't be going around as a teacher, you can't be going around to tell everyone, right? So through the game, the student can actually find out on the first cut, you know, they can find out on the game whether this is true by playing the game. So they can actually see, okay, total momentum. Maybe, maybe let me just play the game again, huh? play the simulation, okay, observe, then decide, okay, it appears that from here the total momentum, which is the red line here, is always the same, negative 8. Okay, maybe this number should be negative 8, or maybe I uh, get it wrong first, 8. Okay, wrong. Okay, uh, negative 8. Yeah, I got it correct. Then the system feedback and answer. Oh, yes, well done. You're using conservation of momentum equation. Steve Zeichel mentioned about uh, John Silly Brown. He was in Singapore uh, 2006 during a teacher's network talking about how students can learn by tinkering of codes. So I'm going to show you through concrete example how actually a student can learn by tinkering the codes. Tinkering means to play with it, change a bit here and there and see what observes us, see what happens. Now, I'm not going to... Let me just try to make the font a bit bigger for all of us. Okay, so here in the evolution page, the student can say, oh, yeah, okay, my teacher teach me uh, uh, x1, meaning the cut one. The, this is differential equation, this is mathematics. Uh, uh, it's equal to vx1, differential of x2 with time is vx2. Now, I can actually add a new equation. For example, you notice that x1 is, uh, has a certain amount of friction, which I'm going to put as minus 10, and it's dependent on the velocity x1. Okay, So I just key in something. Let me see whether I got it correct. I'm, I'm, I'm imagining I'm a student. Okay, they play, I click a compile button. Okay, What I was intending to show you was this. With this new input, the student can actually now see a drag. He has actually modeled a drag equation in the simulation. So with this, you can see there are many powerful learning opportunities available, uh, which I can't show you. Okay, so how did the student own the learning? Okay, as you can see from the reflect, the student has to decide what are the variables to investigate. Is it momentum or is it kinetic? Manage your own learning, I think you can, you can see, because of the demonstration that we had, a common experience for us to ground all this understanding now, SDL and COL uh, appears to make more sense now, doesn't it? Am I right? Uh, extending learning was a bit harder to do in this case. Uh, what we did in practical sense, uh, because we had to measure, we had to do something which is practical and within a very short time. So what we did was we got the student to, to solve a scenario-based uh, problem. But because of the experiences and their inquiry-based learning through the simulation, they are perhaps in a better position to then make sense of the physics now, and then apply it to this problem. Uh, this is just another way of saying that we put that in pair work. <laughs> Accountability or learning, uh, we got, at the end of the lesson, we got the students to share their, their findings. So through this, presenting the answer, then as a peer, you, you know, straight away shoot a color down, or you, you know, suggest some alternative view in a constructive way. I thought that was pretty meaningful uh, as far as collaboration was concerned. You know, how to give constructive feedback. So I think that is my little short uh, sharing. Thank you.